Oh, what's up, guys? Happy Monday. It's November 18th, 2019. I'm Gun, and I want to say thank you guys for checking out this channel. Thank you for checking out this video. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a light, a light look at today's NBA slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, but no, that the meat and taters, the meat and potatoes will be this afternoon over on Twitch. So if you guys haven't made the move to Twitch, a couple of exciting bits and pieces of information. First of all, the address is twitch.tv slash gundacker99. Link will be in the description below in the pinned comment. Uh, if you guys haven't made a Twitch account, make one. It takes a minute if that uh, gets signed up. Follow the channel, and then you can be, be part of the live chat. You could subscribe if you want to support the channel. Um, and then once you're signed up and signed in, man, um, you can go to our new portal at gundacker.live. Oh, look how pretty she is. This is, um, this is a cool way to supplement to, uh, or complement the live stream. Um, especially for those of you that like a little bit of the darker backgrounds. We still have the, the live chat on the right side, but you can interact with the stream a little bit more. Uh, if you scroll down, uh, you can see my Twitter feed. Uh, you can see the countdown to the to the next live stream. Um, you can tip if you want, and we have merch. Oh, the merch. You guys have been wanting merch, so we got merch. We brought back some of the Run DFS, dot, uh, Run, Run DFS shirts. Uh, you can click on that. Uh, matter of fact, if you click on this, it'll open this up. But also, we have a couple more items in the uh, in the store itself. Here it is. Got the RunDFS.com hoodie. It's the first run print of that. Uh, a heat uh, activated logo cup for the Gundacker Dot Live logo. Um, I'm waiting on mine to, to arrive, but apparently, uh, this logo uh, pops when you put something warm like hot coffee in it. Um, or hot chocolate or hot tea, uh, which I think is pretty cool. And then, of course, the Gundacker.live uh, hoodie and t-shirt. So I'm super excited to have this thing launched. Um, I think you guys will like it. I uh, definitely think you guys will like the countdown. So uh, my goal has been to make Twitch partner. In order to be a partner on Twitch, you have to average 75 live viewers uh, during your streams. Um, so I want to make sure I'm doing everything I possibly can. Uh, to be um, aesthetically pleasing to you guys uh, for, for who's watching. Uh, and then, of course, <clears throat> uh, having a schedule. A I think a schedule is going to be the largest part of uh, reaching uh, steady viewership. And I know every day I wake up, I'm checking Twitter. You know, like, go on one time you stream a day. And sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four. It's usually the same every day. But this week, you'll see that the schedule for the week it is all three except Tuesday at 4 p.m. And then there may not be a stream on Thursday since there's just two games. So I'm excited for this. I hope you guys will uh, take the plunge right on over if you haven't already. Twitch.tv slash Gundacker99. We have nine games tonight <clears throat> on the docket. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and uh, it's not, you know, not, not really anything that's sticking out or or other than, like, the Houston game. So it doesn't look like it's going to be one of those crazy nine-game slates, but we'll see. Uh, we know how value tends to open up on these uh, on these type of games. The Cavs at the Knicks. Uh, we got 207.5 total for that one. Three-point spread in favor of the Knicks. Definitely nothing like super sexy in that one. Total has already dropped a point. Indiana Pacers at the Brooklyn Nets, a 221 total with a four point spread in favor of the Nets. Uh, that game becomes super tricky from where I'm sitting at this hour. Um, just for uh, the injury news and notes on both sides of the basketball, starting with the Nets, Kyrie Irving, uh, right shoulder impingement listed as questionable. Uh, I think he'll play, but we'll see if he doesn't. Obviously, Karis LeVert's still out. Um, so those are two injuries on the Brooklyn side that would shape that game. If Kyrie were to miss, obviously that'll increase uh, interest in uh, Spencer Dinwiddie and especially Joe Harris, who had a really good game against Chicago uh, on that last game that Kyrie sat. And then the Pacers, man. This might be the most banged-up team on the slate. Malcolm Brogdon uh, is being listed as out, uh, so that'll open up a lot of 
minutes for Aaron Holiday. Uh, and to top that off, TJ McConnell is questionable. Uh, so if TJ McConnell also did not go uh, along with Brogdon, uh, he would line up as one of the trendier plays, especially on FanDuel, uh, where he's... Uh, uh, let me put, he's 4,100 on FanDuel. So, uh, he would probably be one of the highest home players on FanDuel going against the, uh, against the Brooklyn Nets without, uh, without much resistance there. Uh, Jeremy Lamb isn't officially out. He's dealing with a left ankle sprain. We haven't seen him play in a minute, but he's officially questionable. Uh, he was rolled out of the team's previous two games very quickly. So an upgrade to questionable is promising as, as he's been sidelined for almost two weeks now and has slowly been ramping up his activity level in practice. So we'll see if Lamb's able to go. If he's not able to go, we also know Oladipo's out. Uh, and that would leave opportunities for Justin Holiday, TJ Warren to step up. Uh, DeMonta Sabonis, right hip contusion is questionable. This team cannot stay healthy. Uh, and if he's out, um, I guess that would be even more eyes on the front court where Miles Turner is 6,100 on DraftKings, 69 on FanDuel. He had a pretty uh, pretty great game in his uh, season season return. I don't say season debut. Uh, if we pull up that real quick, Miles Turner against Milwaukee, 33 minutes, dropped 44.71 fantasy points uh, in a high-scoring double-double, 14 shot attempts. So, uh, there is a lot to watch on the Indiana side. Hopefully we get more information uh, throughout the day. And hopefully by the time we, we really dive deep on this afternoon's live stream, um, we'll have a, a much better picture uh, to kind of start guessing uh, what the Pacers might do today. Uh, and then moving on uh, to other games here, Charlotte Hornets at the Toronto Raptors. We've got 215.5 total. Uh, and the Raptors favored by nine. Charlotte defensively has not been uh, great. Uh, the Raptors uh, injury news and notes, nothing um, nothing different that we haven't been used to the last couple days. I think what we should expect uh, as Kyle Lowry continues to be out is a lot of continued minutes for Fred Van Vliet. Uh, he's been one of my favorite pocket plays. Um, not, I don't say pocket plays, but it's been one of my favorite plays just because it's minutes, 39, 40, 45, 39 minutes. That's a lot of freaking minutes. Uh, so 7,400 for him today. If I go to the RunDFS.com uh, Team DVP tab, uh, Charlotte is actually been decent in terms of fantasy points allowed to opposing point guards, but I'm not going to let that deter me uh, from the minutes and opportunity for Van, for, uh, for Van Vliet here because uh, he could be pushing 40 and he could be pushing 40 to 50 fantasy points. The one caveat uh, being uh, is would they blow out the Hornets? Uh, Hornets have been playing scrappy basketball as of late, but they haven't really been playing upper echelon teams. They've been playing teams like the Knicks, the Grizzlies, um, and this is the Raptors. And the Raptors coming back after a nice little uh, West Side uh, road trip. We'll also say if we look at that Team DVP uh, chart tab, uh, the Charlotte Hornets are giving up a lot to forwards and a lot to centers. I don't know that this is the spot where I'm going to trust Marcus Gasol with money, but uh, I can definitely uh, double down with... Maybe some Pascal Siakam and even some Anonabi who returned. And he's only 4,600 on DraftKings. Maybe not the, the sexiest click uh, after his last game, just dropping 15 and a quarter. Uh, but we have seen earlier this season Anonabi give us as much as 38, 40, 40, 41. DVP kind of is in his favor here today. I definitely wouldn't mind uh, looking at him as a potential value play. Uh, from where I'm sitting, from what time it is, of course I can always play my boy Devonte Graham. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I I, uh, I will always play some Devonte, but there's nothing here in this Raptors matchup uh, that suggests we should be going at him uh, with too many of the Hornets players. Um, they haven't been the best team at rebounding, the Hornets that is. I mean the Raptors, but neither have the Hornets. Um, I don't know that I can bank on enough minutes for P.J. Washington or Cody Zeller to really extract upside at these individual prices. So this far out, I can't really commit uh, to anyone in particular. Let's go back to the Vegas odds tab in the RunDFS.com NBA VIP spreadsheet. Milwaukee Bucks 
Uh, at the Chicago Bulls, Bulls 228 total with an 8-point spread in favor of the visiting Bucks. It started as a 230 total and a 6-point spread. Uh, so uh, a little bit of action both uh, kind of in favor of the Bucks. Uh, this is a game that uh, we just saw a couple of rounds ago. Uh, and the guy that kind of kept it close, Kobe White, he's 5,300 here. Uh, he's been on fire uh, kind of lately. Um He's a, a extremely dependent three-point shooter. Uh, if he does well or not, it's going to depend on how well he's doing from behind the arc. One for seven against Brooklyn. Um, he had a f fake nine rebounds against Brooklyn, um, which didn't kill you at this price to, to get you know just over 20. Uh, but you're looking for the high 40s, the high 30s games, uh, and those are coming off of uh, great uh, shooting nights from downtown. Six threes, seven threes against New York. The six threes came... Uh, against Milwaukee. Uh, so I think if you game script this to be a spot where Milwaukee either leads for the majority of the game, which they should, or uh, the pace and, and, and style of play where the, the, the Bulls have to continue to uh, keep up in terms of scoring. Uh, either way, I think you just draw a, uh, let's see, a tournament interest in Kobe White. Because the Milwaukee Bucks have been allowing a high percentage from behind the arc, 37% uh, success rate for opposing three-point shooters. Chris Middleton being out uh, is going to uh, probably keep that kind of where it's at. So I actually don't mind uh, looking at some Kobe White here. It's, a, it's not my favorite price because I do think you know we need maybe close to 20 real points to really extract a lot of tournament goodness from Kobe White. Uh, but he certainly... Uh, somebody in this matchup that makes sense that I can game script him uh, and his style of play to uh, really um, benefit in this situation. 44 points per game, by the way, the Bucks have allowed uh, from behind the arc. So that seems to be their weakness, and he seems to be uh, the best three-point shooter on the Bulls. Zach Levine, somebody to watch here. Uh, if I go to the Bulls injury report, because uh, I actually put him down for zero minutes, so it's kind of serial. It's kind of serial. Uh, Zach Levine, I don't have an update on Levine. Why do I have him down for zero minutes? I have him, uh, maybe that's just an oversight from yesterday. It might just be an oversight. Um, I thought maybe he might be out, but all right. Watch Zach Levine's, uh, injury note. I thought I had something down this morning. I guess I don't, I don't want to pause the, uh, the recording to, to kind of look like an idiot, right? <laughs> uh, Eric Bledsoe and Giannis Antetokounmpo are both uh, fun targets for me. I think Bledsoe has been the uh, guy that has been dropping 40 more than uh, we'd like to admit, right? Um, 21 in that game against Indiana, only 26 minutes. It was a, a smack fest, but prior to that, 49, 44, 42, 43. I mean, he's definitely been producing at a really efficient level for fantasy. He's taking double-digit shot attempts, and he does enough in the peripheral column to get you there. So, uh, in that game against Chicago last time, he dropped 49 and a half. There certainly would be a spot at, at 7,200. Well, I'd gladly take 49. And Giannis Antetokounmpo is a play all day long, all day strong. If you want to get fun with a revenge narrative, uh, you can mention Robin Lopez, but there's no reason for me to... Um, Go above and beyond. Anyone else here early on not really screaming at me? Wendell Carter Jr. is always intriguing as a tournament play from the from the uh, uh, Bulls front court. And Laurie Markin is getting really, really cheap on DraftKings at 59. There's not a lot of warmer fuzzies there uh, based on what he's been doing this season. But can we get 30-plus? He did 36 against Brooklyn. It's really cheap. <laughs> He is really cheap. Let's move on to the next game. Uh, moving to the Vegas Oz tap. The Blazers and the Rockets. This will probably be your uh, most attacked, targeted game today uh, across throughout the field. Um, the total is 232 and the spread in favor of the Rockets by 7 points. Rockets, for uh, as bad of a rap as they uh, get, Rockets have been really, really hot. I think they're on like a 7-game win streak um, not that they've been playing a lot of the best teams, you know, Timberwolves, Pacers, what, Pelicans, Bulls, teams like that. Um, but they're getting the job done and they're coming in with a little bit of momentum and the Blazers have kind of, 
uh, struggled against bad teams. Uh, so we'll see if uh, Dame and CJ kind of step up here. Uh, you got to like the total. You got to like the pace. You got to like the lack of defense right now from both teams. Uh, if we go to the uh, team stats tab in the rundfs.com VIP uh, spreadsheet, we go to points per game allowed. Uh, right at the top, or right not at the top, top 10. Uh, Houston Rockets, 114.2 points per game allowed. Uh, the Portland Trail Blazers, 114.1 points per game allowed. So both teams have actually been allowing uh, a, a lot of points to opposing teams, and this sets up very well for everyone involved. Damian Lillard is way too cheap on DraftKings, 8600 bucks. So this is certainly a spot where we should anticipate Lillard uh, to flirt with another 50 fantasy points. Last three games hasn't been getting there. San Antonio, that's a game where CJ McCollum popped all the way off. Then Toronto, uh, a good defense. And then Sacramento, uh, it happens. 44, missed it by six points. Only took 10 shots uh, in that game and then followed up with, by going just two for toe from the field against Toronto. But prior to that, man, this is Dame time. 50 plus, 75. 51, 57, 58. I definitely don't think uh, I'm going to have any quarrels and uh, qualms by attacking Damian Lillard here, where he's kind of priced at a point where I'd be happy to walk away with 45 uh, and ecstatic to walk away with 50 plus. He's averaging 50 uh, Fanduel points a game on the season. Uh, and I, yeah, in this matchup, I really, really don't see a whole lot of resistance uh, against them. CJ McCollum. Uh, at 7,300, a little bit uncomfortable of a click. I don't usually tend to play McCollum with Lillard. I think on this slate, you could get away with it in a couple game stacks and just hope for the best. Uh, but McCollum is kind of just uh, uh, a mid-30s guys on, on the most uh, uh, median range of outcome. Did take 25 shot attempts against San Antonio. I have been targeting shooting guards against San Antonio. Uh, the the I guess the, the the counter argument here is the minutes for McCollum were great thirty seven plus minutes in five six six games straight yeah we'll probably take we'll probably take thirty seven minutes or or greater against James Harden defense so uh, I'm absolutely okay with playing either combo uh, Lillard McCollum whether you want to split them or, or what have you um, Rodney Hood kind of uh, I guess technically qualifies as a value play. Uh, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DraftKings. Looking for 25 plus fantasy points. You can get it here. And then Hassan Whiteside uh, is an intriguing option uh, going against this front court. Uh, Houston is right around mid tier on the slate in terms of fantasy points per allow, uh, allowed per game. Uh, the Rockets have been full of injuries. We saw Westbrook arrested in that T Wolves game, but uh, we've seen Clint Capella down a couple of games uh, in the what, the concussion. Protocol. So let me go look at the Capella situation. Clint Capella uh, concussion is probable, so we expect him to come back. And then Daniel House Jr. back is being listed as probable. So Daniel House being listed as probable. Um, he's a junior, and I didn't fix the CSV yet. Uh, 5500 on Fando, but can we talk about his DraftKings price for just a minute? Just a minute. $3,700 for Daniel House. Seems awfully cheap. He goes down in that Pelicans game. Prior to that, it's 32, 28, 35, 26, 33. I mean, this might be one of the free squares on, on DraftKings if I'm making 20 lines. So, uh, definitely look like Daniel House is shaping up to be uh, a stellar value play on uh, DraftKings.com. Uh, and then I would just be okay with scripting this game several different ways uh, for game stacks. Um and then 8,300 on Russell Westbrook. I think uh, people are getting a little sour taste in their mouth with Russell Westbrook. I'm not. 20-plus uh, shot attempts in his last couple games. Uh, he had, th look at the price. We're, uh, again, this is not 10, 12K Westbrook. 8,300 bucks. Um, 38 fantasy points against Indiana. He missed the mark basically by two points. Maybe you could argue by uh, seven points, right? If you really want 45 to, to make you feel like you got a bargain. He missed 16 of 21 shots, man. You turn around and start making a, three more shots, two more shots even, and, and one, uh, and he's a fine play at this price. Uh, people can, can dog on, on Westbrook all they want, but I'll, I'll have him in my lineups tonight. Uh, I just will. Um, I just will. I know uh, Capella's back. I felt like with Capella out against uh, Indiana, that could really um, increase Westbrook's uh, uh, rebound potential 
Uh, and in that game, we saw Westbrook have a uh, eight rebounds, which was his high for the past five games. Uh, so, I mean, I guess I wasn't necessarily wrong in that, in that regard. Um, but I'll still take a shot on Westbrook and hope for uh, a chance at 40 fantasy points, 40 plus. So I don't think this price is enough to keep me away. Maybe on Fando at 9,400, I don't make him a priority because uh, 400 more, I go get Damian Lillard or something like that. Uh, but certainly on DraftKings, you can you can expect me to, to fire up some Westbrook at, from this far out. 12K for James Harden, 70 plus point potential. You know how that goes. You play it, you play it, you don't, you don't. I think Harden versus Giannis is an intriguing argument, but I think Harden's in a game that we kind of expect to be a little bit more neutral, but I guess Vegas doesn't really expect to be that more uh, that much more neutral, right? A four-point difference in total and just a one-point difference in spread. So you can really make a case for Giannis. I think Harden will get the, uh, the name brand uh, edge in ownership, uh, all things considered. Uh, Spurs at the Mavs. Uh, four and a half points spread in favor of the home team, Dallas Mavericks. 225 total. Uh, the San Antonio Spurs have just really not been uh, a great defense. Uh, they haven't been somebody to uh, run from. They've been really someone to go pick on. Uh, so the Mavericks are in a good spot here. I really only attack two Mavericks um, slate to slate. That's Luka Doncic. That's Kristaps Sprzingis. Doncic under 10K. Uh, I think he makes a unique uh, play here because he kind of... Uh, gets priced into the middle of nowhere where, you know, if you try to jam in Harden Towns or even Cat with Wiggins expected to be out again, even though it's against Utah, uh, he's a guy that could easily drop 70 plus fantasy points here. Really good. Uh, 57 against Toronto. In Toronto, we've seen what they've been doing to opposing point guards. Uh, 70, 70 plus, 60 plus. So I like him a lot. Um, from this far out, there really isn't a lot of extreme. Must play values. I'm sure that'll shake up on a nine-game slate as more news comes out, injuries comes out, and these Qs turn to Ds or these Ds turn to Os. Ooh, giggity. Um, but from where I'm at right now, <laughs> um, Doncic at 9,800. That makes a really fun tournament play um, because of his 60-plus point potential and because the Spurs are just a really good matchup for opposing everything. Uh, if we go to the Team DVP tab, uh, in the RunDFS.com spreadsheet, we look at San Antonio. Not a whole lot of green here. There's a lot of red against some small forwards and uh, brownish uh, green against uh, you know the guards here. And I've been playing guards, especially shooting guards, against the San Antonio Spurs uh, all week. I've had a great Fournier game against them, and I've had an amazing C.J. McCollum game. We got a points per game allowed per game right now. Uh, San points per game allowed per game from the Department of Redundancy Department. Uh, San Antonio Spurs, 114.5 points per game. Their defensive efficiency, if we sort that, is the third worst in basketball, 109.5 points per 100 possessions. Uh, and they're giving up a ton of points in the paint. Uh, so maybe Przingis can can start posting some people up. So, um, yeah, give me uh, Doncic and Przingis to start with. And then I don't mind starting to flirt with a couple of names, on, other guys on the Mavs, but it's just not... It's it, this is going to be a, a heavy, heavily saturated minute rotation uh, because the Dallas Mavericks have a ton, especially of wings and guards of people that can play Jalen Brunson, JJ Barea, uh, Seth Curry, of course, uh, uh, Tamar Dewey Jr., Justin Jackson. Um, it, it's a lot of people in the mix here, so um, no, not running um, to play anyone specifically. Uh, Boban revenge game, right? Uh, Spurs side, do we love anyone? We're still waiting on that DeJounte Murray 30-minute game. Uh, earlier in the season, Pop kind of said that after 10 games, DeJounte Murray uh, would get pushed to 30 minutes. Well, it's been 10 games, and we haven't really got there yet. Uh, but I do think it might happen suddenly. So for in tournaments, I still kind of just want to keep playing them a little bit. Uh, just wait for it to happen. And at 5,200, we have seen a pay off this price tag anyway. Uh, so who knows? You might get lucky. Uh, Aldridge and DeRozan, um, they've kind of alternated. But Aldridge has had some uh, better games, bigger games in the last what week. He had 54 against Portland and then another 57 against OKC. So he showed us some 50-point Upside, 7,300. We really can't live with a mid-30s, which is his median. He's averaging 34.5 fantasy points per game. Uh, but in tournaments, he certainly has enough upside uh, that we could consider him. Nothing that's making me feel warm and fuzzy. Moving on to the next game, Celtics at the Phoenix Suns. 
Uh, we've got a 226.5 total for this one. Four point spread in favor of the home team, Phoenix Suns. That's right, the Boston Celtics underdogs on the road here against the Phoenix Suns. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, last I checked, Boston uh, had the highest offensive efficiency in basketball. Celtics scores. And uh, we'll pull up the team stats tab in the RunDFS.com VIP spreadsheet. They did just lose by a bucket to the Sacramento Kings. Uh, but if we go to offensive efficiency, uh, Boston's second. Washington's one? W really? Okay. Wouldn't expected that. Uh, last couple games for Boston. One point loss to the Kings. They beat the Warriors by five. They beat the Wizards by seven. They beat the Mavs by ten. They beat the Spurs by twenty. They beat the Hornets by thirty. <laughs> uh, they beat the yeah the Celtics mm, coming in as road dogs is unique. That's uh, that's that's interesting to me. Uh, but here we go. Vegas knows more than me. Um, Kevin Walker, I could definitely play him at 8,400. Um, the minutes for all the Boston starters we know are going to be pretty high. Uh, the prices are fine individually. I think Kemba Walker is a guy I like the most for, for mid to high 40s from game to game. And then on the Sun side, uh, Rubio 7K, not a comfort price there. Devin Booker's 8K. You know, he wants to drop to 80 <laughs> on the Celtics. We want to attack that. Sure, go for it. Um, nothing that's screaming at me that, hey, we have to take advantage of this spot, this price, um, because all these uh, guys are at price points where we can, um, you know, just look and see pivots elsewhere. Not a high total. Um, I guess it is a high total. It's the third highest total. I don't know. What are you guys thinking? This might be one of those we have to dive in a little bit deeper later uh, in the live stream. Could we get with any of these sons? I mean, Booker at AK seems a little cheap, right? You don't see Booker drop too low or too much lower than AK. Rubio, could we get 40 plus out of Rubio in this matchup against the Spurs? 43, 51, 36. I mean, he's kind of volatile, but he's not. Let me go to the Team DVP tab. Just kind of see where Boston's at. Boston's really good. <laughs> and Phoenix. Has been good against everything. Centers and, and uh, small forwards can kind of pop. Nothing screams at me, but this total and, and the minute predictive uh, or the uh, predictive value in minutes kind of kind of makes me interested in, in circling back here for tournaments. Mm -hmm. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, Utah Jazz hosting the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, this game has a total of 217.5 and, and the home Utah Jazz favored by 10. Man, T-Wolves not looking great with or without Andrew Wiggins. Um, but particularly the last two games without Andrew Wiggins, Dave, uh, took a L to the Wizards, took a L to the uh, Rockets, right? Uh, here we are on the road in a very tough spot against the Utah Jazz. Andrew Wiggins is listed as doubtful with a uh, an illness, and we know that he missed the last two games due to um, the passing of his grandmother uh, being with his family. So, um Big, big ask, big ask here for the Timberwolves to uh, have to fly or go out to Utah and, and face this Jazz team. That's just a really rough team, especially at home. Uh, the Utah Jazz, in terms of defensive efficiency, listed as the number two defense in terms of points per 100 possessions. Right above the Lakers, right below the Miami Heat. Um, can't love a whole lot here. Carlton Towns would still kind of like lead the charge here in usage. And I'm wondering if we look at the slate, you know, where, where there's so many uh, high, uh, I'll say high upside options from the 8K and above, right? Westbrook, Kemba, Lillard, Siakam, uh, Doncic, Giannis, and Hard. Like this cat uh, crumble in ownership here tonight uh, where he was like, you know, super chalky the last two games and only dropped 50 fantasy points. Like, yeah. uh, could this be a uh, hashtag DFS spot for him to be really low owned and and find a way to have a solid game uh, against the against Rudy Gobert? It's interesting. This is this is totally the the tournament game theory uh, in me speaking. DKP by game log versus let's just go Rudy Gobert last ten games. 
Uh, let's see, last couple games against the Jazz, 15 and a half, 46 and a half, 60 and a half uh, last January, 64. There's some 60s in there that just kind of make it intriguing for tournaments uh, um, just because he'll he'll be so low on, you know. Um, definitely not a cash game play, definitely maybe not even a single entry play, but 100K to first, definitely uh, could see Cat being a, a double-digit price guy with single digit to under 15% ownership without cat uh, or excuse me without Wiggins and uh, that's an, in an intriguing spot for me uh, on the jazz side I think they're all in play really all of them uh, Minnesota has been really bad against shooting guard small forward uh, Donovan Mitchell 7900s on the south side of 8k we're looking for the north side of 40 fantasy points you can certainly get that. 53, 41, 43 in his last two games. I don't mind uh, at all uh, attacking the T-Wolves with uh, a guy like Donovan Mitchell. Um, and then Rudy Gobert and Mike Conley are definitely worth mentioning. Conley, looking for the north side of 30. He hasn't really been blowing 30 out the water. Uh, but in this match, if you can, I put him in 33 minutes. The algorithm spit back 38 fantasy points. You take that. And then Rudy Gobert, man. This guy just keep, yeah, keep looking up and he's winning tournaments and no one's playing him. 55, 48, 51 his last three games. Uh, five games ago, 48 against Philly. Uh, I, I definitely think um, Gobert um, at 8,200. We're looking for a north side of 40. Uh, he can do that and more. And we might even flip this here, huh? Rudy Gobert versus Cat. If Cat's been doing all right, what's Rudy Gobert been doing? DKP by game log versus Carl Anthony Towns last 10 games. Uh, 32, 37, 56, 51. So we're also seeing some 50s in his uh, range of outcomes. So uh, I jot his name down. And then the last game tonight to talk about is the Oklahoma City Thunder at the Los Angeles Clippers. Again, reminder, this afternoon, twitch.tv slash gundacker99. Once you're signed up and followed and subbed, if you want, uh, you can go to gundacker.live. Uh, and this is the uh, viewing portal that we have designed uh, that you guys can interact with the stream a little bit more. Um, and then, of course, we have merch and all that other good stuff there. And, of course, after that, after the party, it's the after party, uh, which is at rundfs.com. If you guys are looking to get access uh, to the spreadsheets that I've been using uh, for this video and that I'll be using later in the afternoon stream, uh, grab a subscription at rundfs.com. A week pass gets you locked in. Uh, what is today? Monday? You get locked in until next Monday, which will include uh, all week-long coverage for NBA and the NFL coverage on Sunday. We may take Thursday off, just a heads up. Uh, uh, if I take Thursday off, I'll probably give Sunday back. Usually I take Sunday off after NFL lock, uh, but because Thursday's just a two-game slate, um, I just don't think it's going to be drawing me uh, uh, forward to, to play too much, you know? Uh, Thunder at the Clippers are the main event tonight. Uh, again, we're going to dive right back into all of these games this afternoon on the Twitch stream. Uh, but this game comes at us with a total of 220 in some spots, 219 and a half with a nine and a half point spread uh, in favor of the home team Clippers. Watch the, the status of uh, Kawhi Leonard. Uh, Kawhi's missed the last two games for the uh, Clippers. I'm trying to find the Clippers injury report that I had jotted down. This would be under Los Angeles. Yeah. Adoy. Uh, here we go. Kawhi Leonard. Knee. Will not play Saturday. So I don't have an updated status on Kawhi. Uh, but if Kawhi was out, uh, it becomes a fun revenge game for Paul George. Paul George, 8,100 on DraftKings. He has been extremely efficient uh, in his first two games of work. 20 and 24 minutes, 49 and a, a quarter, and 54 DKP. That is just insane production. Um, the Atlanta game was a blowout, so I don't even think 20 minutes was necessarily uh, the plan, right? Could he have played 25 plus? Maybe. I don't know. So at 8,100, he'd, he'd definitely become uh, a play for me, uh, more so if Kawhi Leonard was out. Uh, and then you get Chris Paul coming back to the Clipper Center, or the Clipper Center, the uh, Staples Center. Um, and he becomes an interesting 
6K play. The other night, I looked up, and he was in first place of my tournament. He dropped 45 DKP against Philly. 38 minutes of play. Maybe more minutes than uh, we want. I think that game with the overtime, so you take four minutes off. 34 minutes. Maybe 34 minutes is not what we expected. Um, but, man, this guy's actually been putting together a point per minute every game. Uh, in the last couple games, uh, uh, we've seen 30 plus, 40 plus. So, uh, he might be a unique play, but I do think that this Clippers team is at full uh, strength, man. This is a dangerous team. Beverly, Kawhi, Paul George, there are just no defensive holes on that uh, starting lineup uh, to, to really get through. And then, of course, Lou Will and Montrose Harrell coming off the bench will just uh, run up the score. So um, not a great spot for OKC, but we do have some fun uh, revenge narratives really for the entire team. Chris Paul, former Clipper, SGA, former Clipper, Danilo Gallinari, former Clipper. Um, so a couple homecomings uh, are coming back uh, for, for this team here. Uh, the total, what did we say the total was? 219, nothing crazy, but the spread is pretty wide. So maybe if the if we start looking at the spread getting out of control, Dennis Schroeder or somebody that could come in, mop up a little bit uh, uh, and not get Pat Bev defense, right? Um, but nothing nothing to write home about just yet. So that's our first look at today's slate. i um, going to dive even deeper uh, a couple hours on the Twitch channel. I appreciate you guys stopping by on a Monday morning. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And uh, those of you that join me this afternoon, uh, I will have punch and pie. And it's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. If you got anything else for me, twitter.com slash gundacker sports. Uh, until then, my friend, good luck, God bless, and go win some money.